Mr. Verner. Mayor Reynolds. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. opportunity for us to be here tonight Lord we ask that you guide us to help us with the decisions made here tonight glorify your name Lord we know that you are the giver of all things good and for that we are thankful in Jesus name we pray amen Somebody making too much noise. Semi or 
7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and it gives you a different class, class A, B, C of, of different decimals. Uh, See if my hotspot pulls up, Randy. You can use it if it does. But if I may, it's not just private ordinances or private residences. Um, one of them is they don't have private functions there. Right?
what we have here is I did some research. And I, there's three things I printed out. This. The first one is the one look like this. It says the independent. It's a newspaper article from a little city in Washington. And I really love what they've done. Um, I don't ask them to pronounce the city Chu, We La. What they did is they actually invented their one. They, they had one from my time from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. But they also set rules for 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. as well. Um, so the resident for zone maximum decimal reading through the day will be 60 dBA and 50 dBA time. I don't know what any of that means because I don't know what that's all that stuff sound like. And it has also restrictions in the retail and business zone as well. Um, so I brought this so the council can get a look at it because um, it looks like they had to find the method of using sound devices. So I actually called their city today and I had some things uh, that helped navigating their website. And on the back of this, is that part of the newspaper article, just this one little paragraph. I actually adopt, got a copy of their code that's actually in their books. So this is what their looks like. We will have different classes as far as that. Um, I'm assuming they did their class A, B, C because like us, we'll have different size yards and different parts of town. Like our seven yards are smaller than our fives. Our two yards are much larger than our seven. So I don't know really their logic behind what they did, but if I had to guess, I would say it's because of the size of the parcels. So I don't know if that's something we just do across of the board, no matter what residential zone you live in.
Yeah. Well, I, 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 we, we would probably have to open the actual place as opposed to an app. Something that would open up the corner. Yeah. Um, there is an app that's um, uh, associated with the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control. It's a free sound meter downloaded on iTunes, and it's a sound level meter. It's on them. Designed for work sites, but also provides effort and noise measurements for everyday use and can be downloaded and used by anyone in any location. The app can save and share the measurement data. Hmm. Um, and then there's also another thing that I got that is from um, healthyhearingfoundation.org, which is a magazine that is a type of magazine that's been in publication since 1958. And they list um, two specific devices and other details from an article that was posted in June this year. And I think we need to come on, but the city provides free smartphones to the babies for the use while on duty, right? What do they do? They have cell phones. I would rather buy them something that they don't have. And I can look at it because that Mr. Linda may not be able to hold them for a while. I mean, someone's cell phone would be malfunctioning if anything. And if you Google decimal meters, you can find them from $22 to $400. Oh, what's that $22? You probably have to be next to the speaker. They don't do it. 
do you have to pay for it? Like, what do you mean? Do we assess your property tax? Or that can start to real quick. It does, but we are by law. Thank you. 
sitting on the balls. The ball fields. The ball fields are announcing and stuff. What about like the Heritage of Life festivals? All that would be impacted. Well, I, I think you, when you look through this and you guys do your research on how you want to present your ordinance to your city and count to your, to your city, is that you'll find that there's exceptions. So the exception for the ball fields the exception for the private events. And, you know, how do you guys want to draft it and get it set up? But I'd highly recommend you guys do your research and find out what bits and pieces you want to bring to your, to your citizens. The, uh, <clears throat> how much noise is that doing, Mike? It just depends on how busy it is. The one thing that's saving... Isn't it more of a low volume? I mean, there's no speakers about the environment. No, there's, a spe there's yeah. one speaker there, an outdoor weather speaker that plays music. I mean, and they try to keep it at a tone where the pool can hear it, but, I mean, you know, again, I mean, it's still going to carry over to the apartments behind it. Have you had any complaints? There's usually a couple every year. But they used to, the, the, the pool, the speaker now currently is on the main building facing the they apartment. The speaker didn't go in the back. Yeah, they, they used to be in the back, and I guess the, the wire got all chewed up just from age, and they just, it was easier to put it on the other building. So, I mean, that could probably be. But how long has the pool been there? Uh, exactly. How long has the ball field been there? Right. How long and things like that, people coming through, you know, if you catch one, great. You know, maybe they won't do it again. That's one less person. So maybe it won't make an immediate effect, but, you know, maybe five years down the road, it will. You know, the semi-trucks are like, yeah, I'm not going to get a ticket today. I'm not going to use that, that brake and make a loud noise or something like that. Um, Jaybird will not kick into your 45 miles an hour. Right. Why do you 
in there to get the lowest speed, but I know that 75 is it. <laughs> well, when you downshift, you're right, you're going to get, you're going to hear the RPM pick yeah. up on the engine. <clears throat> and then use our engine to slow down the, to save the brakes, but they use the brakes, and that's when you get that high pitch squeal. And it just sounds like it's falling apart. Maybe we should think about moving the speed of the signs out further if we can. Move it out further there. When they come up and then they downshift or you know, a lot of them. That's the state that has to do it. Yeah, that's the state. state, that's the state.
So, you know, you, you, we have, I know we have semi running there. I've seen, you know, uh, they go down too late and they turn whichever way they want to go or they go out Jefferson, mm -hmm. whichever way they want to go. Uh, I think they do that because they have a wider swing than they do uh, Maine and Jefferson mm -hmm. for, for the semis if they're going east or west. Uh, so,
my, my opinion anyway. I think that would be a good assumption to wait until the council meeting gives time to go over this stuff. Uh, residential-wise, and we start slapping fines where if a police officer has to come to your house more than twice and they catch you with whatever device they have of, of breaking the rules, then you got to fine. And that's going to stop people because no one wants to pay money. So, you know, it's, it's a worth blaring your music or whatever you're doing worth a $200, $300 fine. We just need to make sure, too, that, again, the Hispanics are not going to be targeted in this town. I deal with complaints all the time. Eight out of ten complaints I deal with have to do with neighbor A who's not Hispanic. Call on on neighbor B who is. I work with a lot of Hispanics. Um, it doesn't make a thing of our world breaks. No, it doesn't. But that doesn't mean unfortunately people, because I'm the first one to go to the order to JAS page and look up who's calling. I, I work with a lot of Hispanic people and people from Iran and Pakistan and everywhere. I have Hispanic neighbors that are the sweetest people in the world. We trade flowers.
disruption and, and insensitivity. And you're exactly right. Turn it down when the deputy's there to wait 20 minutes and crank it back up. Yeah. That's flagrant, you know, disregard for your neighbors and for what law enforcement has to tell you. Uh, I think we've got a great starting place here. I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. We go through this and we see what we like and we don't like. Maybe it's a, a you know starting point. And if we can uh, get something that's workable for fixed location, then that gives us some place to go with moving traffic and so on. Yeah, agreed. That would be the easiest quick fix. Do it in order to put decibels on it. But again, we have to, I hate to use that word, but we have to find out somehow how loud is this music over by this man, this man in his house. And I'm sorry, I don't know if you're in, but over by his house also. Uh, find out at the pool. Again, and it just 
and worse and worse until somebody gets the message. So, so instead of would have to be a warning tip. I mean, they would actually have to write a warning like they do for traffic or whatever. But it has to be under the defendant, like, because you can't just say this house because they can move and go to a different rental house. They can't start with the actual property address. I think somebody could mark the address, but you can't sit there and say because the next time you come around, it could be a different person that was in that house. They're being charged for something that happens right. much before they yeah, go there. Yeah, yeah, I think so, so, I mean, when it comes to the finding of it and how you're going to put people in court, that's all going to be, that's not dictated by you guys. That's going to be dictated by the state law and ORC and how they follow it. And that's when the line will come in and whoever is at the position at that point in time um, to, to take that analysis to it. You know, like, you can only do this for the first, you can only do this for the second, you can only do this for the third. We, as you guys, as a council, can't do that. So instead of a speech, my understanding, I couldn't be wrong. Right, the court would have to be. And so, what we hear, we will hear from Lynette and the Sheriff's Office, and So instead of a speed trap, we want to be a sound trap for a while. Yeah. Sometimes you got to hit the marks. People get the ball. I hope they don't hear my lawnmower. <laughs> do, do we want to move on to go back up to A now? Or, uh, I, think, I don't think there's much more we can talk about in the noise. Now let's, Till, let's read up on it.
again, it's informative at this point. Um, these are the signs. Again, this would be a policy decision to count. At that point in time, you know what you guys want to do with the ordinance. You can get on that involved and let me know if you guys will be signed. Okay, so we have a the ordinance we have on the books is not working. Because innumerable times I've been bothered. You call the deputies, the deputies can't track them down. My thinking is, number one, if, we, if we've got an ordinance on the books and we're not following it, then what good is it? Since we have an ordinance on the books, doesn't mean we're we have the ability to the manpower and force everything. Especially with salesmen coming out, you know, they don't stop at the city building. We were allowing people to call. And that, you know, and when you talk to these people about the fact that you have a permit, yeah, my boss has got to call. Okay, hold it, guys. It's got to be on you. Well, we were not notified of that. Okay, that's the reason. factor. As far as I'm concerned, if somebody comes into town, they are, let's say, charged under this ordinance. Now we send out to their parent company a registered letter stating, okay, this one's on us. The second one, the third one is going to be charged to you plus the fine that the individual's going to pay and make it. the corporate people responsible. If you're allowed to do that. But if, but we can't, and the city, I don't think,
confirm that they can do that? Yes. Trying to get the data is not going to work out.
charge of that rule, regardless if you wanted to be in the union or not, you have to still pay what they call fair share dues. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court struck that down. So now, so now if you do not want to be in the union, you do not have to be, you do not have to pay for fair share. Um, one of the figures I read, just one of them, um, said there was about $47 billion nationwide with this lack of funding. Um, I did get a letter from the union presidents down there. So, with that being said, I think um, we, uh, it's going to happen a little earlier than what we normally do. Um, but I think we have a lot of iron. Is there any city employee that's in the union indicated that they don't work in the union? I did not ask that question. I did not figure it out. That was a big um, I don't know. Well, I know you didn't ask that question. No, I didn't ask it, but I, what I see is like the younger ones don't really care.
so that they're not. Well, the city, the city of Dayton does it, and it's the same union represent us that represents the city of Dayton. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing a couple of different things here. Maybe I can just clarify for me. Two council members that are going to sit in and listen and observe while reading those the negotiations are two council members who are actively going to participate in the negotiations. I think you want to be very clear about that. We have a privilege yet, but I'm assuming, and Mr. Cook can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm assuming that the council members would participate. To an extent of their knowledge. Yes. I mean, they're not going to know the ins and outs of the day to day operations. How we've done our negotiations the first time is we have a round table. Then the party split. The party goes in there. Our party stays in there. We can talk amongst our parties. Um, I think council will be there for some things, but council's not going to be able to offer much of a focus on other aspects of the negotiation. So this is a proposed? Yeah, this is just a goal. But it's a good way. I think the negotiations are not an open meeting now. Our negotiations with our collective bargaining you know, I mean, no, our no. attorney's office, I mean, I don't know. I, last I checked, I don't, you don't have very many negotiations over the public. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so um, that's when you deal with employees, stuff like that. So um, I don't know. That, now, that would be another good point, because now council members on the ball, does it have to be an open meeting? Because it's our money. Well, there's a council member. Yes, and that would be something that happens to do. But I don't have a problem with all negotiations, having negotiations right here. Sometimes you get into personal discussions about someone's health stuff, and that's why they need this, and that's why they need that. You know? Um, but at the end of the day, you have a contract that is public record. So, uh, but if a council member does come in, then, then you have a record on the negotiation part. Right. Yeah. Sure. Negotiation to it.
Security had the ability to contract it out. That was put to the legislation a couple of years ago. Um, can I be honest with you? It was worse for the contractor than not. And I say this now we only use one company, and that's Experian. We have a bill on I can't sit there and say that they gave us a credit pass to steal the charge like 30 bucks a lot, which is stellar. Um, this year we had a little bit of outlier. Um, we, were, we, we were down one seasonal, and we hired one less seasonal than we normally do. And then also we've had a lot of people out for injuries and or significant other injuries and or surgery. So this year has been very tough with manpower. Um, I know that we've put a good, got a good chunk of it knocked out. Um, I think our issues lie with vacant structures who are owned with banks. That is by far the fair of them all. Um, we have a three violation rule in the city, so it says basically after your three violations, we don't need to give you any more violations, we can show up and your grass and go. You know, the other flip side of that is the moment it goes to the sheriff's sale, all that money goes away. Quite I've sure. had to write off $10,000 before the property payments because someone could have bought the house from sheriff's sale. You, can take, you don't have to take off your water or sewer lane, that can stay, but any kind of public abatement or nuisance by the law comes off. So it's a double-edged sword with these houses that are vacant. Um, that's why some of these cities cut the grass once a year, or twice a year, and that is it. Can we put the city set a bill directly to the owner of the property? Or no? If it's owned by the bank, we send it to the bank, it just ends up on their assessment on the taxes, yeah. and the bank lets it go so bad, yeah. someone ends up buy, they usually buy it at a sheriff's sale, they cut based off tax delinquency, and then the moment it goes to sheriff's sale, I get a call from the auditor, or from the sheriff, or whoever gets to be first in, and the regular letter take all this money off, and it's gone. So that's why a lot of these cities do it once or twice a year, and that is it, because we'll lose money. So if we can find a way, we're going to have a meeting Friday, the moment you are delinquent on your tax, what is the expediency cost of the city the owner of that house? So we can turn around and sell it for next to nothing, we're going to lose the payment on it anyway. Or we can tear that house down. What I would like to see is some money in the 2019 budget to allow for us to take possession of these houses and tear them down. I cannot look in the history of our city budget ever to find out when the city has put line item money in the planning and spending to take care of that dilapidated structures. And if we don't have that line item, not until 2018, I can pull $7,000 out of it and I'm going to tear this house down. It has to be allocated in that budget. When we put these, uh, let's say, fees, the grass removal, on the tax duplicate, how does that inform? Through an ordinance. Okay. Every August we'll do a call. Is that going on as a lien? It goes against assessment of the property tax. It's an assessment and not a lien. What's the chance of putting that on as a lien? Because as I understand it, all liens have to be paid before that property I don't know. I don't know. I'm telling you right now. You're not, you're, I'm telling you right now. I don't know, but I'm telling you, you will not have a change at all. Well, I mean, my thoughts: if we can put it on as a lien, and that way we can guarantee our money coming back. Let me define lien. So I'm sure there's a definition. Why? Because they will lien. Anybody? Anybody can put a lien on any property, like they did work or something, and you did not pay them.
city has to work with the federal government. For the money for the and if a grant, a grant comes out, let's say the neighbor next to you didn't mow the grass, it was almost as high as a house, you go in there and start mowing grass. And I, I think they use three, maybe five years that they maintain the property. So they did that through an ordinance or something? Yeah, it's through a grant money through the federal government. So they have to be City takes possession of the property. Through the I think that's through the land bank. Huh? I think that's through the land bank. We all Either way, the, the people are maintaining after so many years, they get the property. I would rather allocate money in the 2019 budget, take possession of that property, tear it down, and sell it back to the little one back. We just got out of Twin Creeks. Do we want to start with totally the